The TrekWorks YouTube channel is sponsored by HDA Modelworks, suppliers of scale lighting products, detail accessory parts, and complete model kits. Visit HDAModelworks.com today. Hey there everybody, Boyd here with you again. This is part 7 of our 350 scale Polar Lights Enterprise build series. And uh, you guys haven't missed a thing except me uh, pulling the tape off of the secondary hull here after we finished sealing it up in the last video. So we're going to get into the uh, final stages of getting this prepped and ready for paint. Um, I'm ready to sand down the seams now. I basically start off here with some uh, uh, 180 grit sandpaper. This has been used a little bit, so it's not totally 180 degree or 180 grit. Um, it's a little bit, you know, smoothed out, but it's pretty aggressive still. And I use this to basically go after uh, this rough seam that we have on the main part of the bottom and along the spine here, um, because we got a little bit of glue hanging out that's gotten hard, and I want to kind of knock that down first and start scuffing it in. You know, you want to get a nice sand line on here, so you're. Uh, Putty will stick to it real nice and spread out just a little bit. So I'm going to focus on this area right here. Try not to push down too hard on my pylons and, you know, wind up spreading the top of the model apart. It's actually really, really strong now. It's been drying for, uh, you know, a good couple of days. I gave it a good amount of time like I usually do. So the glue is all good and cured up. But we'll just um, work this down a little bit here. I'm just feeling it with my fingers. I'm, I'm feeling for um, high and low spots or a step between one side to the other. By step, I mean one side being higher than the other. Just kind of clean up this little edge right here a little bit. Get the sharpness off of it. This takes a little while, but the 180 grit sandpaper knocks it down pretty darn quick. focus right in that little curved area right there. You can see I've got quite a bit of glue that came through there. You can see how <clears throat> aggressive this paper is. It's taking the plastic off. You can see it coming off there in like a powder. And then for, you know, first I'll kind of sand along the line like that and follow it and then I'll kind of you know, at a little bit of an angle, I'll sand across it, and that'll, you know, kind of help smooth out the whole thing, too, and blend it all in. So I'm liking what I feel right here. Now, a lot of the times on these, um, there's a pretty substantial step from one side to the other. You know, one side sticking up higher than the other. And usually you feel it a lot down here, like around this curve right here on the fan tail. But this one's actually pretty darn good, so um, we'll take it. Okay, we'll move on to the top now. Just focusing on the main part here where I see all my glue and my high spots. Yeah, I want to say a big thank you to everybody that's been watching the uh, uh, video build series so far. And uh, we're doing this for you guys, you know, so you'll be out there and you'll have the uh, few tips here and there. And, you know, maybe watch these videos and it'll give you a little confidence. And if you've had this kit sitting around and uh, maybe these videos will help you to get started on it. I'm getting quite a few uh, responses that are saying just that. So that's good to hear. Pretty good already. I'm liking it. This one, you know, these kits vary. Uh, I've done so many of these that I've gotten used to pretty much any anything that they throw at you. And like I said, they some fit a little better than others, and you just got to clean them up a little bit. But they all come out nice if you just put in the work. 
We've already got our neck sanded and everything, so we don't have to do much on that. And we put that on. Just mainly right here, right in between the pylons is where I feel a little bit, a little bit rough still. Now I'm gonna go across it again a little bit. Check it out here. I'm liking that already, guys. I thought this was going to take a little longer than that. We'll get a little bit up here at the front, just underneath of the neck where we've got this little gap right here. Just kind of reach in there and get at it. <coughs> now, I was going to mention on this, um, the sandpaper I buy, this is what they call, it's for a DA, like a, you know, a dual action or orbital sander. It's got the sticky back and it normally would be a round piece and I like it because I can uh, I buy this in a big roll and uh, I can fold it over and it sticks to each other because you know you make your paper a little stiffer you can control it a little bit better hold it a little bit more flat and then uh, I can double it up again if I want a little bit more you know if I want to get a little bit more pressure on something to get it inside like up in here because I can't get my finger in there so the paper will be stiffer and I can press on it harder without it folding that's exactly what I'm doing here. I'm getting up in this little spot right here. There was a pretty good little hunk of glue that was sticking up there, but that's that's a good sign, guys. Like I said last time, when you put these big pieces together like that, a little bit of glue popping out is uh, means that you got plenty of glue in there, and uh, that joint's never going to separate on you. You did a good job um, prepping it, you know, making sure it was clean. We had good good clean plastic to start with for our glue so this model will last basically forever okay so that's already smoothing out pretty good as well got a little piece right up here at the front part of the neck we gotta get that high spot off of there so when we put our putty down we don't see that okay Make sure there's nothing on this side now I'm just kind of going over that little notch right here at the front part of the deflector dish. There's one more little step down that that makes. So we get to the end of the seam here. Now, I'm not sanding this hard enough <clears throat> to change the shape of it much, guys. That's important. You don't want to keep sanding it until you start making a flat spot or something, you know, where this is supposed to be round. So uh, pay attention to that. I've got a little chunk of glue that's stuck right in the little... I'll just pick that out of there with the uh, hobby knife. So that when we put our putty in there, it's gonna lay in there all nice and smooth. That's a lot better. Okay. I'm just gonna work on this one little area right here. I still feel a little bit right there. And then you want to make sure you sand this little spot right here across this way. Kind of reach underneath of the ledge a little bit and sand that too. Because it's, you know, the parts are not exactly the same exact equal length. So you want to make sure they come out that way. Just kind of blend it all in. All right. Now you can see here too that um, I haven't put the uh, fan tail part on there yet. That you know where our little tail lights are. I wanted to save that so I could show you guys. I'll grab that right now. We'll get that glued on <clears throat> because we're going to be putting over the little seam on it on the bottom here too. So what I, what you want to do with this, you guys, is uh, since we've got those really bright. Uh, SMDs there at the rear that are going to light these little lights right here in the fan tail you want to light block this because um, You know the shuttle bay door is going to come down to right here But you're going to see this little lip and part of the floor just a tiny little bit of it And so if you don't do that now uh, Before you put it in you're going to have to put a lot of coats of paint on that because the light will leak through that You don't want to see like a glow coming through there But uh, you don't want to paint on this side of it because that's where our SMDs are going to hit up against it and you don't want to paint the the face here because that's where your little lights are. So you can see I masked that. And um, 
I'll go ahead and pull the mask now because I don't need it anymore. What we're going to be doing is with these little uh, light groups right here, we're going to be putting small miniature masks in here from the masking set, right? So um, we're going to cover that up. Now, um, so what I want to do here is I want to mask that up, and then I'm going to spray a little bit of the flat black over that once I get it on the back of the ship here. And um, we'll do that before we put down our primer and anything. And it depends on, you know, I'll keep turning on the power until I can't see any light leaking through it anymore. And it uh, depends on how many coats I get. If I start getting pretty thick, I'll replace the masks like I talked about and put new ones on before I start piling it up so much that it's going to be really hard to get those out. So we're going to leave those on there then after the, until the end, even after we put our little um, final coat of uh, hull color on. After that, we'll pull these masks, and you might have a few little imperfections there. And so you can just take the hull color on a really nice little fine tip brush, and you can go around and clean up the edges. Uh, but you're going to want to take that same really fine tip small brush and put your colors in, in on here. So we're going to put our Tamiya transparent green. Uh, it's actually red on the outside, green here, yellow in the middle, and then red on the outside. So um, if we go a little bit over, a tiny little bit over on that, when we you know put that on there we'll touch up around it with a with a brush with some of our same paint that we're using for the hull that craft acrylic paint is really nice because it levels out and smooths really nice even if you put it on with a brush you know you can't blob it on there you do a kind of a nice careful job and then once you put your clear coat over that it will disappear and look like it's all been sprayed on there and look nice and clean but we'll show you that part when we get to it so i've got it light block here so it's time to go ahead and glue this in <clears throat> now it might um it might uh, fit in here kind of tight. This little lip's got to slide over the top of our SMDs, right, that we put in there. So you want to make sure that you don't, you know, uh, catch those when you're going in. You want to make sure you're getting, you know, over the top of them before you start to push them in or you're going to push your LEDs or maybe even break them, break them, you know, or knock them out of place. So I'm kind of looking from the side and I'm going to push up really hard. I'm going to try to, the one on the, uh, the one on the left hand side here is a little bit higher than the other one and I don't have much gap in between that so I'm going to be really careful here. Let me see if I can uh, get it a little bit better from this side. Okay. I want to make sure I don't move it. All right. I got it to slide past them. Okay. So <clears throat> just before it goes shut, we'll put a little bit of glue on the lower lip here. Don't put a whole lot of glue here, guys. Just enough to, you know, make sure it's going to stay secure because you don't want to blob it on the inside of here very much. We want that to be nice and clean so the light comes through it. And then we'll just put a little bit on the sides here. And then push it up in. Get it as close as we can get it. Okay. And then... Um, if anything, like, I just got a tiny little glue spot right there. If anything like that happens or there's a tiny little bit of paint hanging over here, I'll let this dry a few minutes and I'll just lightly scuff over this with some steel wool and it'll clean all that right back up and I won't lose my detail for my lights. But so the back of the shuttle bay is pretty much in place now. So we're going to have to, uh, as you can see, we're going to have to putty this seam right here and fill it in. But um, uh, we got to let the glue dry in that a little bit. But just for the sake of the video here, normally I would... I would set this off to the side and wait a little bit. Uh, but just for the sake of the video here, we'll putty up to that point and we'll stop, you know. And But I'll basically show you how I put the putty on um, up to that point right there. So I hit this little spot right here. I see another piece of glue sticking out. I basically just go up to this edge right here with my putty. These little side spots right here fit so tight that you really don't need any... Uh, putty in that part so but we do want to blend this little part in here and then blend it in with the rest so I'm just uh, scraping away a little bit of the glue that leaked out and, and like I said rounding these edges down just a little okay now as I talked about with putty I have several different types I use I've got this uh, perfect plastic putty I've got some Tamiya I've got some uh, Vallejo, and uh, my my primary go-tos are my Perfect Plastic Putty and my Red Spot Putty here, um, and that works for most applications if they're small gaps, like I talked about. 
one important thing, uh, guys, make sure you don't leave any dust from your sanding in your seam because your putty won't stick to that. It'll just come right back out when you're trying to sand it. So make sure it's clean. But um, the uh, putty, um, the putty that I use depends on how severe of the defect is that I'm trying to fix. So if it's a fairly wide gap or if it's a deep, you know, divot or, or imperfection, then I probably won't use this because the, you know, the, the main thing you don't want to do with this stuff is put it on real thick. It's, it's, it never dries completely hard. So, you know, it's a softer type putty, so it's not made to make structures and shapes and things like that. It's only meant to fill in small little imperfections. So, uh, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and use it because we've just got a tiny little gap here. Just tiny little, uh, you know, spots where you can see into the seam a little bit. But otherwise, it's nice and smooth and uh, we don't have any big, wide, you know, open gaps where the putty's going to fall in and sink in and all that. So, it's pretty much the same on the top and the bottom. Now, if I have something like this that's a little bit like that where it's really, you know, it does have a pretty big gap and it needs a lot of, um, uh, you know, I've got to fill in a lot of deep imperfections and stuff. I'll grab this for you real quick. Um, this is what I use for that. It's a little bit more labor intensive, but um, it works really, really well. This is called uh, Polyflex and this is a actually an automotive product but it's a it's a cream type filler it's a catalyst it has a <clears throat> a hardener that goes with it and so you have to mix you know about four to one and um, so uh, this has what a what they call a flex agent and it's meant to go on to plastic so it's uh, it was formulated to fix like cracked on cracked plastic parts on cars and uh, so it has a little bit of flex agent in it so if you were to use it on a bumper or something like that you know the bumper can still get touched a little bit and it won't crack right away like regular hard bondo will so it's ideal for models and um, so you've got to mix this up but once you mix that hardener with there you've only got a minute or two to work with it before it'll start hardening up but if I've gotten something you know pretty severe I'll use that now it's a, it dries a lot harder it's much tougher uh, it does sand and feather edge really nice just like regular old bondo does so you can blend it right in but um, whenever you use this, you want to put it on pretty thin and don't use a whole lot of it. You know, don't make a big mess because you're going to spend a good amount of time sanding that down. It doesn't sand down nice and easy like this um, this red spot putty does. So, uh, But that it when it dries, it's super strong. It's almost like bonding the plastic together. And uh, it's great for, like, you know, making shapes and filling in big gaps and big imperfections if you ever have a model that's really bad. I would recommend getting some of this stuff now this stuff isn't cheap it's about forty dollars for this this uh this you know container here but uh if you don't you know if you take good care of it don't let it stay in an area that gets super hot or super cold it'll sit on the shelf for a couple of years and you can get you know dozens of models out of this if you were even if you were using it all the time um so you know that one's kind of my um my big gun if you want to say it but for all my other you know normal stuff this stuff works really good. I'll use this in certain spots because it's water-based. And we are actually going to use a little bit of this when we get to this uh, part back here where I talked about where we're going to fix the uh, the little gap at the top of the shuttle bay here. And uh, we're going to make a little slurry, what they call. We're going to take... Uh, actually, this is my old tube. It's starting to get hard. This one here is my new one. We're going to take and mix a little bit of this with... You know, some of this with a little bit of water and just kind of dilute it a little bit since this is water-based enough to where I can suck it up in my little syringe and I'm going to inject that into that little seam right there and then we're going to take a little paintbrush and we're going to use you know a little cup of water dip it in that and we're just going to brush around in there and we can completely smooth all that out really nice without doing any kind of sanding and uh, the, the trick to doing it is is to uh, you know put a little bit of putty at a time and start working it in don't put a massive amount in there and then you know you've got so much in there that you can't get it out without you know you there's too much to smooth it out. You'll kind of see the logic to it. But we'll get to that here in a little bit. All right, so right now let's um, quit yakking here and um, get some putty put down. So I'll start here at the very back. And some guys use tools or whatever, but I just, you know, if it's something open like this and easy to get to, I just prefer using my finger because I can um, control it pretty good. <clears throat> now, typically, putty tends to shrink a little bit when it dries. So 
you're going to wind up putting more than one coat of putty on because what's going to happen, you'll see it maybe in front of you in the camera here, as I put it on, it looks like that seam is completely gone and we're, we're totally filling it in. But in a second, as it begins to cure, um, you'll see that seam beginning to reappear a little bit because it's actually shrinking to, <clears throat> shrinking and kind of trying to retract and go, to in, go inside of that, uh, that seam. So um, we'll let this cure out. The thinner you put it on, the faster it'll dry. Keep that in mind. Um, you're, you know, it's it's sort of just like paint. You don't want to, like I always talk about with my paint work, you don't, you don't need to make the thing look perfectly beautiful with your first pass. Um, you can see already right here that that line is starting to reappear a little bit. Like I said, we'll stay away from this one here for a little bit. So let's flip it over here. And uh, we'll kind of stand it up so we don't touch our existing. And I'll just go ahead and hit this one right here. I'm going to go all the way up to that neck. Overlap it a little bit. And then just smooth it out. I'm going to cover up these holes completely right here. Don't even worry about those. If they fill all the way in, that's fine. Because when we sand this down, they'll reappear. And we'll take our little uh, pin voice and mark you know, little holes where we know where the center is. We'll keep doing that all the way through our putty work. So when we go to uh, put those little lenses in there at the end, we can find them, you know. We'll have to make the holes a little bit bigger, but okay, a little bit back here on this very part of the tail. We'll go over the edge just a little bit because we're going to see a seam line there. I'm not going to do the bottom side with this kind of putty where the other seam is. Um, <clears throat> we're going to do that with our little slurry that we're going to make here in a little bit. Okay, so get this. Got this stuff a little bit too thick, but that's all right. Just take a little bit longer to dry. Okay. Just want to make sure I'm all blended in there real good. All right, that's a pretty good first shot. Now, up here around the neck, we're going to do the same thing. Uh, it's kind of hard to get into the area up there at the front, but uh, I'm going to try to squeeze this down and keep it as narrow as I can, but I still want to push it into the uh, the gap, you know, that goes around the neck there. Don't worry about that excess. We won't, we'll, we'll be sanding all that off. Okay, sorry you guys, we had a little break in the action there. Didn't uh, clear my camera from the last couple days of videos and we uh, ran out of memory. So I just reset it really quick. Um, you didn't miss anything. I was just about right along in here, filling in that side of the neck. And so I'm going to come around here and do the same thing on the other side. You guys can maybe see this a little bit better from the, this side. Just pushing it down in there. Trying to keep it narrow. Staying away from my windows. <clears throat> Gets... It gets the toughest to do right up here towards the front. Okay. And uh, I can see I missed a little bit on this side. Hard to get in there. All right, we got that. Now, for the little bit that's um, ahead of the neck here, I just take my hobby knife and uh, put a little bit on there, just, you know, on the blade, on the wide part of the blade and just uh, lay it across there almost like a spatula. Kind of get in there and make sure it's all in the seam and smooth it out. I'm gonna come all the way down to the front part of the housing where we got the seam that makes that little step. Okay, still got a tiny little spot there. I'm gonna use something Maybe I can put a little bit on my tweezers here and reach in there and get that. It's just got a tiny little spot where I can see gap. We can always, you know, we can reach in there with our sandpaper and sand it, but uh, if there's a hole underneath of it that I didn't fill, then uh, we'll just have to put back, you know, come back and do more putty later, so we don't want that. I can see one on this side too. It's just not quite wrapped around the front. Okay work that in all right so obviously this has to dry for a little bit now so I'll take a quick break and uh, when we come back the putty will be dry 
and then I'll start sanding it down. You guys can see how we work that. I'll be starting off with um, the uh, 180 grit again, the same piece of paper, just to you know get it basically roughed in. Then I'll look to see where I've got to put another coat of putty if I've got a little low spot or a little imperfection still going on. And then we'll uh, keep doing that until we're satisfied with the putty. And then the next step will be to um, go ahead and put on all of our masks at that point um, because we're going to be ready to paint. No point in putting on the masks right now because you're just handling it like this and everything. You're, you're going to be uh, knocking some of them off, so you'll just be wasting them. So I never do that until I get past this point. Um, before we prime it too, we want to glue on these little detail parts that go right here. I, I hold off until this point on that. They got these kind of little fine tips on the end. You don't want to break them off when you're doing all this handling and everything. So, um, yeah, once the putty's dry and we sand down these seams, uh, we'll be ready to go uh, masking and then go priming. And then uh, hopefully we can get those steps done here. And by the end of this video, we'll be painting this. So uh, back in a couple seconds, guys, after some drying time here. Okay, everybody. Well, the uh, secondary hull putty job has been drying here for probably a good half hour, 45 minutes. You can kind of tell when it's dry when it all uh, turns the same color. So we're going to do our first sand down here. I want to show you really quick before I hit that. I was talking about just a second ago where you can see where we have a little bit of, uh, you know, where the uh, seam opened back up a little bit on our putty because it shrinks a little bit. So we'll sand this excess putty off and see what we've got and see how much more we need to uh, re-putty. And I'm using this uh, 180 grit. Not digging in super hard, just uh, gliding it over the surface, and you can see how fast it uh, knocks this stuff down. I'm gonna focus a lot right around the uh, mount right here at first. Get this cleaned up. Okay, we'll work our way towards the back. Now my uh, fan tail piece has been on there long enough now where we can putty that on our next pass here too. Start getting that worked in. Turn this around so I can get this other side real good here. I'm sanding right up to that little line that's on there. I'm just make it, making it look like it blends right into the rest of the hull without having any kind of a gap. It should have a little um, indentation on it. Okay, I'll blow this off real quick. You can see we've got a few spots where it's still kind of thick. You want to sand away most of the putty from uh, everywhere except where the actual seam is when you're done. good yeah this model actually fit really nice Tim if you're watching you got a good one they all come out good in the end but uh, this one just needed a little bit less work that's always a nice bonus for a guy like me okay and we'll just keep working this a little bit more getting this extra thick stuff off of here see right here we've got a little spot that's lower than everything else so that's gonna have to be reputtied maybe just a tiny little bit right in through here and I think maybe I'll I think maybe I'll just put one real uh, thin skim coat over that again but before I do that I'm gonna go ahead and get this sanded down as well a little bit more tedious up in this area working in between these pylons that's 
why I like to use aggressive paper so it doesn't take me forever. pretty good guys it's blending in real nice you can see our little holes are starting to come back here which is just what we wanted okay I'm gonna start working around the neck what I'm gonna work on first is getting the uh, you know the stuff where it's spread out a little bit off and then we'll get closer and closer and closer to the neck as we go guys said you wanted to see all this <laughs> if you'll watch me sand I'll show it to you okay so we're going to get this all shaped in real nice here come along real good Start working on this side of the neck front and uh, get underneath of that. Let me go ahead and push these wires inside here for now too. They're actually going to be tucked in here for the rest of the time now and I'll take a little bit of uh, uh, paper towel and stuff in the end of that too so we don't get a bunch of overspray in there and we go ahead and do our paint work. on here so I can see nice and up close. I'm working on this little part right here where the little first step of the ring comes down and smoothing that out first. You should wind up with just a little bit of putty on there where the actual seam was and nothing much extra. Okay, we're gonna, now we're going to start working on that little kind of slope there in the front. It's all coming out really good, you guys. Now I'm going to double up my paper again, kind of curve it a little bit, something like that. And I'm going to slide it underneath here and start working the stuff that's up a close. You know, up close, it's hard to get to. looking good. Okay, now I'm going to get on the side a little bit. Get that excess off until it's all feathered in. Just uh, with this with this rough stuff, guys. This 180. I'm just I'm just roughing it in is all I'm doing. I'm not doing my final. You know, we're gonna finalize this with some 320 and then some 600. I'm just getting the excess uh, thick stuff off of there right now. I can get an eyeball on the uh, shape that we're coming up with here and everything. Blending in really nice. Okay, we're gonna 
focus around this little flat spot right here where it meets the neck. Still got a pretty thick chunk right there. It's going away though. I've got to turn it where I can see it, you guys. I'm trying to keep you keep it on the camera where you can see it, but I've got to turn it where, I, where the light hits it just right, where I can uh, see down in there. I don't want to sand too far and make a low spot. We want it to blend in with the rest of the hole nice and flush. I can, if you do it right and everything, you can just feel how solid this neck is. This neck is not going anywhere. All that prep work we did and the extra glue and the cleaning and everything paid off. a little thick and it's not a hundred percent dry but I'm working with it. It's just a little bit chunky. Okay we got a little bit of high stuff right here yet. Still a little bit wet right in there too. So I'll, <clears throat> I'll back off on that and let it as you're sanding it 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 generates heat too and it uh, you remove the top layers and lets air get to the stuff behind it so it starts drying up pretty quick you just leave it alone for a little bit if you feel it getting a little bit soft and then come back to it far though because we're going to work it the fine detail with our finer grit paper here our 320 okay that's it for the uh, the 180 for the moment Let's see if we have to redo anything I'll get some 320 out here now and we'll start working that. And that's going to start taking away our scratches that we made with the 180 that's in the actual plastic. And it'll start to uh, smooth out and start looking a lot better. I can get a really good idea of what we still need to do with our putty or how the seam really looks. Still got a pretty big thick chunk up in this corner here. I'm just letting that dry up a little bit more. This one here, that little spot right there. You don't want to keep digging in, you don't push your putty underneath. You want to start like um, sloping over the whole thing like this and blending it in like that when you sand it. You kind of do the same thing on the sides. <clears throat> Just coming up on the sides here. The neck where we scratched it a little bit, getting rid of those. Don't worry about any dust or anything getting in your window. See, you can see why now we didn't um, we didn't put masks on because you'd just be tearing half of them off or knocking them off and everything. It's not hurting these windows at all. They're slightly recessed, so my sandpaper's not even touching them.
you really can't tell um, you know a hundred percent you can eyeball this up you know pretty good but you can't really tell a hundred percent how it's actually gonna look until you spray just a tiny little bit of primer on it so uh, that's no problem we'll have it masked and everything and we'll uh, we won't be doing a lot of major sanding so we don't have to worry about our masks then we'll just be touching up little minor imperfections we might see with the primer on it mainly around these really tight seams that are really in close and uh, once we straighten that out then we can you know put a couple of good coats of primer on it and be ready to go almost there already guys it's coming out really good this takes a few minutes okay everybody we're back for the last segment of this video here um, I've just been cleaning up all the rest of the uh, putty I've been sanding it down with uh, you know I roughed it in with my 180 got it down to where it was pretty smooth and then I went to 320 so right now what I'm doing is just cleaning up the last little bit here with some 600 and just to kind of get rid of some of the little sand scratches that are in the uh, plastic part of the hull along the areas where I sanded my putty but it all came out really good I'm really happy this one uh, like I said a couple times already this one fit together really really good so I wish they were all like that but it's just part of it and it's just part of modeling and uh, we just do what we have to do so I'm really happy guys um, We'll be finishing up this video here, and then I'll come back uh, probably by Tuesday or so, and we're going to be set up to um, get this thing painted. I'm going to um, finish up my sanding with my 600 here, then I'll go ahead and start uh, putting on some masks. I'll probably show you some of the masks going on at the beginning of the next video, but I want to try to get through the whole painting process of this by the time we finish the next video, which will be part 8. So, uh, looking really good here, guys. Just seeing a couple sand scratches. Can't stop sanding, you guys. But you can see all of our seam work came out really nice around here. Everything fit together really good. The hull came together real nice. And uh, so she's ready, guys. It's looking really nice. This is a really big step, like I said. So, we're going to come back here uh, in part eight, and we're going to make that little bit of slurry out of my... Uh, perfect plastic putty here mixing it with water so I can use my little injector and I'm gonna go right up in here around that archway and a little bit on the sides to fill in our light leaks that way uh, and we'll take a little paintbrush with some water and we'll smooth all that in because you really can't get in there to sand anything that'll smooth all that out and then once that dries that will be ready to take primer and paint but we'll mask everything and then we'll start spraying away okay so we'll do all that in the next uh, video uh, thanks for joining me in this video, you guys. Appreciate all the viewers, all the subscribers. If you like the channel, please, uh, please subscribe and hit that like button. And um, we'll see you in, on Tuesday with uh, Part 8. Take care, everybody, and happy modeling.